I am never going to get any better at figuring out the first thing to say <laughs> when, when, when this thing goes live. Sorry. I'm <laughs> maybe just always going to be awful at that. Uh, sometimes I think of things, and then when I go to do them, I chicken out. <laughs> I was like, this sounds terrible. Anyway, uh, we're back to talk about more things that may lie to you in the plan cache. And uh, this time we're going to be focusing on uh, on table spools, a.k.a. performance spools. Cool, right? Now, again, because I'm recording this ahead of time, I have run the store procedure ahead of time, and I have saved you, faithful viewer, 27 seconds, another 27 seconds of listening to me talk while a store procedure runs. I feel really bad for people who see this live. Actually, I don't because I've saved off all of the long-running execution plans so I can just open them, which is nice. Fun. So here we have a plan. <coughs> Amanda Planet Canal. Panama with uh, a, a table spool in it, a performance spool. You can see that this is uh, of the lazy variety. And what this means is that SQL Server has, has, was concerned and it was concerned about uh, either doing a lot of repetitive work or or doing a lot of hard work to figure something out. Generally, um, the same thing that you, you know with with index spools and with with well, spools in general, they all they always seem to happen. Uh, you know, for in select queries and update query or modification queries, they can be all over the place. But in in regular select queries, they always seem to happen on the inner side of a nested loops join. And the reason why uh, SQL Server may, may, may show some consternation about this is because nested loops joins are incredibly repetitive. By, by definition, they are a loop. You take a row and you go do something with it. You take a row and you go do something with it. And so SQL Server uses spools to cut down on I.O. and other stuff. Now, the eager index spool will take all of the input data and and spool it at once and then you know either i don't know if it I, to, to be honest i don't know if it cr like takes the data and then creates an index or if it spools the data into an index i have no idea i just don't know <laughs> couldn't tell you but lazy spools are a little bit different lazy spools uh will take a value and then depending on uh, if that value is a new value or value or an old value, either go and run this branch or just reuse data currently in the spool. So in this execution plan, and I feel like I should explain this a little bit, uh, there is a sort up here, and that sort helps the lazy spool be more efficient. So we take all of the data from this temp table and we sort it in order. So uh, we so that SQL knows better if it can reuse of the data in the spool or if it needs to rerun this branch to repopulate the spool. So let's say user ID. Let's say that there are ten user IDs that uh, that are the number one, and SQL Server takes the first one, runs this branch, and and uh, populates the spool. And then for the next nine user IDs that are one, it'll reuse the data in the spool. User ID two comes along, it'll say, oh, we have a new value. It'll go run this and then repopulate that and then reuse the value the data for two over and over again here so we have that so that's how the spool sort of generally works that's why this execution plan looks the way it does and of course the repetitive work of there being a whole bunch of duplicate values is you can see that when you look at the spool you go over here and we look at <coughs> uh rebinds and rewinds uh i believe it was um I believe it was Paul White who said that a rebind is like a cache miss and a rewind is like a cache hit. And I, I love that explanation of them. So we can see that we did, uh, let's see, 327,000 uh, cache misses. And we had about 1.7 million cache hits. Right, and if we tally those up, that'll actually give us uh, the number of executions should add up to... Um, Oh, that's the estimated number of executions. Oh, where is that number of executions? It's around here somewhere. Number of executions. Oh, uh, 2147223. That is a seven-digit number, and I do believe that is exactly uh, this plus this. So the number of executions is that. And then the, the number of rows that go through this pool is, of course, much, much higher than even the, the count of rows. Um, uh, from, the t from the underlying table. And that's something that I like to call out in, uh, in Blitzcache. Well, 
actually it's something that I've recently started to like to call it in what's cache. I've 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 written the I've written the code in. I just need to check it into GitHub. Um I'm just I'm just not very good at at it. But I want you to I want you to what I want you to remember about this plan here is the amount of time that we spent in this portion of the plan, right? About fifteen seconds here, uh that these row estimates are all wonky and crazy and that these are and the these lines are on the rather thick side. So what we lose in the cash plan, the fidelity that we lose in the cash plan is um, pretty significant, I think. So um, what uh, Blitz Cash will warn us that we have a many rows table spool here. Okay, we spooled out many, many rows, right? We spooled out a whole bunch of rows. And when we look at the query plan, go down a little bit to where this thing ran, ooh la la, how could this possibly be bad? We have these very, very tiny rows, and we have, uh, well, I mean, we have a few things in here that, that cost a, a, a bit, but, you know, um, as, as we'll learn from, as we'll learn going through other videos, cost down here can be a pretty pretty big liar, too. But mostly, it's, you know, like I would look at, if I was looking at this plan, I would say, holy cow, what did we do up here? This is crazy. Why are we, why are we redoing this and sorting this, and why are we nested loops joining this? And Like, I would, like, this wouldn't catch my eye, necessarily. Right, I would say, oh, look at those tiny little lines. We we hardly did any work down here. What's the story, Morning Glory? What happened to us? Like, why would you do that? <laughs> why are you insane, SQL Server? Um, so yeah, uh, this is another way where uh, the plan cache can be misleading. Uh, don't always. So there are a few things. Few things at work here. One is don't always let the the line thickness. Uh, tell your eyes where to go and uh, two, don't always believe the line thickness because the line thickness can can lie significantly about um, the work that it's doing remember that spools uh, are there to try to help with repetitive work uh, specifically like repetitive IO um, and they're, they're there for a good reason but often uh, they're there because you did something very silly um, either you know there you know you could have um, you could have given SQL Server a unique set of values to look at or told SQL Server that it's working with a unique set of values, or you've written some rather complicated logic into a query that ended up on the inner side of a nested loops join, uh, and perhaps it might be worth decomplicating that uh, that logic in some way. Um, SQL Server uses spools when it ha when so to kind of kind of to avoid thinking too hard about things. It's like I can't think about this all at once. I'm going to think about this in, in a different way. In, in index spool, it's like I'm going to think about this in an orderly fashion. And with table spools, it's like I'm going to think about this in smaller chunks. Right? I'm going to take this and break it up into little pieces. So there are there are a number of ways to fix this stuff. And again, the purpose of these videos is to t teach you how to fix things. It's just to teach you to beware of these things in execution plans because they can be rather misleading. Anyway, uh, that does it for table spools. In the next video, I forget what it, what it is. Um, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching, and I will see you when we talk about series of question marks.